Mr. Smith, I appreciate the chance we have to get together. Now, I don't know if there's something or not we have that will help you, but I'll go through the areas that we work in, areas such as increasing cash flow, decreasing debt, reducing taxes, and we also specialize in life insurance and annuities and how they can possibly shave years off the potential retirement date. And after that, if there is an interest on your part, I'll gather some information and we can get back together at another point and go through some specifics. So today, there's nothing to buy. Just sit back and relax, okay? Great. Well, let me tell you a little bit about Federal Financial Group. Federal Financial Group is a national company representing several insurance companies and other financial institutions with billions of dollars of assets, some of which have been in business for over 100 years. And what we do is we teach people about money, how it works, and actually how to make it work better for you. Specifically, our goal is one thing, to help people become financially independent. So what that means is that the interest that you're earning on the money that you've got put away replaces what you normally would be earning from a business or a salary. And it's at that point you don't have to work anymore. You may choose to, but you don't have to. And that's financial in uh, independence. So wouldn't you like to know how to get you there the soonest? And actually, that's where I'm headed today. What I want to do is I want to touch on some of the issues and challenges that face us today and then talk about the solutions. So first off, if we look back over the last 10 years, incomes have actually risen, yes. But living expenses keep going up and up and up. And for many Americans, there's no real way that incomes have actually kept up with their housing or a lot of things. So what's happening out there is people tend to get into debt. Lack of security steps in. Poor saving habits ensue. And that creates some real problems. Now, this is my point. Out of 100 people turning 65 today, only seven are financially secure. And what does that mean? Financially secure means $35,000 or more with incomes coming in. So let me say that again, only seven. The other 93 are not. Now what's their situation? Many are relying on family, many on charity, and this is perhaps the majority of them, they're still working. For example, look at all the seniors still working at Walmart. You know, the other day I was hungry and it was amazing. I went into Wendy's and you know at times they have older people working there. Well, it was like probably like two in the afternoon and I wanted to get a chicken sandwich. So I walked in there and there was an older lady working there and she was wiping the tables. And I mean, she was big time old. She was like 78 years old. Anyways, I went and ordered my sandwich and when I came back, there she was down on one knee scraping gum off the tile floor. Now I know that's not her hobby. I know she's probably out of money. See, that's the problem. It's getting worse because we're living longer. I mean, I guarantee when she was our age, there was no way she was thinking that she'd be doing that at Wendy, scraping gum off of the floor at her age today. So here are the solutions. What we do is we work in seven key areas to help build your financial future. And we weave these steps together to help people increase cash flow, get out of debt, reduce taxes, and retire as soon as possible if they desire. So the goal here is to obtain financial independence much quicker. So what I'm gonna do is rip through these really quick, but keep in mind the specific areas that you have the biggest need in or the biggest priority, then we can come back later on and develop a strategy. How's that sound? Great. Well, let's look at step number one. Step number one is inspect what you expect. You know, in order to have more money later on for your future goals and dreams, you need to know where you're spending your money now. So part of that understanding of how money works and how to make it work better for you is knowing where your money's going today. So we're going to introduce you to a tool that you can track your own earnings and expenditures so that you can inspect what you expect. The goal here is to free up extra money that you didn't know you had. And this extra cash can be used to pay off debt or apply toward those future dreams 
to possibly shave years off your retirement date. Step two is to increase your cash flow. Now, Mr. Smith, let me ask you, how would you define cash flow? You know, that's actually a great definition. If I could add to it, I, I think I'd add and say, monthly cash flow is what's left over at the end of the month after all the money comes in and expenses and bills go out. See, we work with firms that specialize in improving your cash flow by reducing the cost of servicing your debts. For example, let me ask you another question. At the end of the year, will you be getting a tax refund or will you owe taxes? Okay, great. And how much do you think that tax refund would be? Three, th you know, that's real interesting because we just had a client in recently that said he every year gets twenty-five to $3,000 back, somewhere in that range, every year. So you know what we said? We said, so what you're telling me is that you're paying the government to keep your money for a little over a year and then allowing them to give it back to you at 0% interest. You know, and he said, well, yeah, that doesn't make much sense, does it? And you know what? It doesn't. There are ways to take that money as it's being earned and put it back into your budget to earn more money for you instead of the government. How does that sound? Right? Exactly. Well, step three is the debt eliminator. Actually, what we do here is help people eliminate debt. And we have two different plans that does this. Now, plan A is called the debt eliminator. Here is an actual client. See, they actually had a 30-year mortgage at $144,000, an auto loan for $39,000, credit card for $10,000, and store credit for $1,200. So if they stayed on their current plan to get out of debt, they'd be out of debt in 26.8 years. But by following the debt eliminator plan, they can turn that 26.8 years down to 13.1 years. Now let me emphasize, they have the same debt, make the same total monthly payment, and there's no refinancing involved. But they're out of debt in 13.1 year, including their mortgage. And then if they continue making the same payment they were, but now to themselves, instead of just being out of debt in 26.8 years, they will be out of debt and possibly have up to $500,000 in savings for retirement. Now, what we used here was an 8% hypothetical return just for illustration use. This was not based on any particular product, but $500,000. Now, in a few minutes, if you'd like, I'll be happy to gather some information. And when we get back together, I will bring you back your own personalized debt eliminator plan, specifically designed for you. Now, Mr. Smith, if we can help you get out of debt years sooner than you would have otherwise have been without changing your total monthly payments, would that interest you? Yeah, I thought it might. That's great. Well, actually, and let me go over Plan B. Plan B, if necessary, does involve your mortgage. Let me ask you, do you have a mortgage? Yes? Okay. And how much do you owe? Okay. How much is the house worth? Hmm. Okay. And what is your interest rate you're paying? Okay. And what is your payment? Excellent. And... Does this payment actually include taxes and insurance? It does? Okay. And your FICO score? Good score. Okay. Well, here is actually the debt structure of a typical family. So they got a first mortgage, a second mortgage, car loan, credit cards, store credit, all of that equal $206,000. So how long might it take this family to become debt free? Well, what they chose to do was doing a consolidation loan. So here, this allowed them to free up some additional cash to build up some emergency fund and pay down debt sooner. See, in their situation, it allowed them to increase their tax deductions on the interest they were paying. Pretty interesting, right? Well, you can see that their new monthly payment right here is $1,192. Their old payment was $1,937. That's a monthly savings of $745 or $8,940 annual savings. I mean, that's huge. So for them, their question was, well, do we do a 15-year or a 30-year mortgage? So looking at that, 
If they did a 15 year mortgage, their payment would be $1,716. So at the end of that time, if they took that $1,716 a month for 15 years, once they were out of debt, put it back into themselves for savings, they could have possibly had $593,801. But if they did the 30 year mortgage, their payment would have been $1,192. That's a difference of $524 and they could have possibly saved 780948 I mean, that is a $187,000 difference. Wow. You know, and again, that's assuming the same 8% growth. So basically, in step three, we help people get the tools where they can manage their debt to eliminate it sooner and not have their debt manage them. Pretty important. Well, step four, this is a biggie as well. Step four is creating an emergency fund. And what I find is that most people don't have one. So if an emergency comes up, out comes their plastic credit card, and that new transmission for their car, say it was $1,800, three to four years later after paying all the interest, becomes a three or $4,000 transmission. See, that's what's hurting people. A sound emergency fund has four factors. It's gotta be safe, liquid, get a good rate of return. I'm talking better than checking account, and it has to be separate and systematic. So here's the point. Have you ever tried to build an emergency fund in a checking account? See, it never happens. It's free game, it gets spent. So here's the point. If it's out of sight, it's out of mind. So we encourage is a separate account, such as a money market. That way you can maybe have money drafted every month out of your check, like $50. Comes right out of the money market on the same day, every day of the month, and it's out of sight, out of mind growing at a better rate of return. And when stuff happens, now you've got the money. It only, you know, it not only keeps your credit card down to zero, but it also helps prevent you from dipping into your retirement savings as well. And if you had to, that would cost 10% tax penalty. So this will help you avoid that. I mean, it is simple, it's powerful, and it works. Step five is protect what you have. You know. Utilizing life insurance to provide proper protection against loss of life, that leads to loss of income. You know, it's pretty devastating when mom and dad have three kids and the dad is suddenly gone. Something happens, it's devastating. And once dad is gone, so is his income. I mean, you've seen that before, right? Now, who's going to pay for the house payment, the food, the light bill? That's what's devastating, right? So part of a good financial plan is proper insurance to replace income. And it also sets up an immediate estate. But here, we do things a little different. We look at a person's financial needs and bring back options that will help save people money while increasing their cash flow, helping them get set up with the proper amount of life insurance. Well, next is six. step six. You know, and I gotta say, this is probably the biggest step right here. And Mr. Smith, if you listen to me, this could change the quality of your life. And this is the one everyone likes the best. So step six is build long-term financial independence. And what I mean is long-term income or long-term savings. Now, there's two elements at play here, two financial battles that you have to win to win the money game. Because if you don't incorporate these, Mr. Smith, can I be strong with you? The chances of you being financially independent probably will not happen. And if it does, it is way out there. So here are the two battles that you have to win. The inflation battle, and you'll see why in a minute, and the tax battle. Because it's not what you make, it's what you keep. See, taxes will hurt you if you're not careful. So let's talk about inflation. Now, have you heard of the rule of 72? Let me explain. It is really interesting. Whatever interest rate you're making, let's say 4%, if you take that number and divide it into 72, that will tell you how many years it takes for your money to double. So 4 into 72 is actually 18. So in this case, it's going to take 18 years for your money to double. So 72 into 4 equals 18. So here's an example. Let's say you have $100 and you have that in an account and it earns that 4% every year, 18 years, how long will that 
or how much will that be in 18 years? Right, it's gonna actually double, correct? So that's $200. So in 18 more years, if it still earned 4%, how much would that be? Perfect, $400. So here's, here's the problem. Will $400 buy in 36 years from now what $100 buys today? See, inflation has actually averaged 3% from 1926 to 2011. 3%. So, Mr. Smith, if I have $400 36 years from now, I can't buy the same amount of stuff. I mean, that's what inflation is. If people are saving then, where are they saving today? I mean, where are they? Banks? Credit car, uh, credit unions, they got fixed accounts, and they're not even going to get 4% today. You can see what's happening, right? Money is growing, but inflation is growing much quicker. They're losing purchasing power, and they may never retire. That's a big, big problem. So the solution is to help them obtain a potentially better interest rate. So let's say a person could actually get a 6 to 12% return. So let's look at this example. Here's a person that's 29 years old and let's say they had $10,000 to invest and they invested at the 4%. So again, 4 into 72, that's 18 years. So that 10% in 36 years grows to $40,000. So you're 65, the kids are gone, the house is paid for, and you want to retire, but you only got $40,000 to your name. So how long is that going to last you? Well, Mr. Smith, the way you spend, that's probably half that time, right? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. But maybe a year, maybe a little longer if you're really frugal, and then you're out of money. And now you're the greeter at Walmart. But here's the problem. We've run out of time. I mean, who wants to work past 65? The only thing we could have changed is the interest rate. And here's the million-dollar question. If you could have had 6 to 12% instead of 4%, would you now have greater financial independence? Yeah, the answer is yes. So let me show you this. At 6%, our money would double at 12. At 8%, it would double at 9. At 12%, it would double at every six years. So in 36 years, you've got $640,000. I mean, that is amazing. See, the only difference between this guy and this guy for $600,000 is the amount of interest rate. Not any more money, not any different time, same age, same starting money. The only difference is that interest rate. But it costs this guy $600,000. Now, Mr. Smith, isn't that a pretty important principle for you to learn? I mean, this right here could change the quality of your life. And you know what? It's not about having $10,000 to begin with. The key is saving a little bit on a monthly basis at a decent interest rate. I mean, if you will save for you at a de decent interest rate, there may be a time where you will not be out earning your money, but your money will be out earning you. Pretty awesome, huh? So the million dollar question is, where can I get a decent rate of return, but have the protection of the principle where you're actually guaranteed not to lose money. So actually there are three different strategies that I want to give to you. And I want to give you a synopsis of each one. And you tell me which one makes the most sense for you. That way when we actually get back together, I can actually put together an approach that is most appropriate and suitable for you. So first is the fixed. I mean, right now we're probably getting two to 3%, maybe. You know, it's guaranteed, but it's so low, which is actually risky because of inflation, right? The second approach is the market. And the market, you know, we're talking about stocks, mutual funds, where we have the potential for great returns but we also have a risk of great what? Loss, you're right. And we could lose our money. 
And a lot of people have actually been pretty upset lately because the markets have been pretty dicey. The third way is actually called the index strategy. And this is where all your principal is guaranteed, your interest is guaranteed, so you don't lose any money. All the interest earned is linked to the S&P 500, which for the past 25 years has averaged 10%. Now, I do want to say past performance doesn't equal future return, but that's what we have to go off of. So of these three, which one makes the most sense for you? The index strategy. Okay. And, you know, it has a credit methodology used with certain life insurance or annuity contracts. And, you know, this is actually a real property, a uh, prop, uh, popular one. So let's talk about it for a minute, okay? The S&P 500 is the most widely held companies in America. They represent over 100 industries, groups such as technology, healthcare, utilities. In fact, the S&P 500 represents almost 70% of the domestic equity market capitalization, which means it's basically 70% of the American uh, um, economy. So get this, the S&P 500 for the last 25 years, if you've invested in that, 25 years ago, the average would almost be 10% per year. Now, let me ask you, if you invested in that 25 years ago and you averaged 10%, you'd be happy, right? Now, when we get back together, if we've determined that an index strategy is suitable for you, I'll then explain the specific products, the costs, the floors, the caps, and all the other terms and conditions. But for now, let me just give you an overview of the index strategy and how the interest crediting works. All interest earned is linked to the S&P 500. And it goes up to a cap, let's say 12%, but without any downside risk associated with putting the money directly into the stock market. So you see, your money is protected from any market loss. And at the same time, you get to participate in the growth of the S&P 500 up to a cap. And in this example, 12% with the protection for downside market risk. So that should be pretty important, don't you think? So let me explain. Let's say you contributed $10,000 in the index strategy. And let's say that the S&P 500 got a 10% return, so now you have $11,000. And let's say the second year, it grew again at 10%, now you're gonna have 12,100. But in the third year, we lost 20%. Now is that possible? <laughs> yeah. In fact, it happened, right? But now, instead of your account dropping down to $9,600, no, 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 it remains at $12,100. So you see why the index approach is quickly becoming one of the most popular. And you can see why. One of the best ways to win the rate of return in inflation battle is to be able to get potentially higher growth, yet protect your principal from any downside market loss. But Mr. Smith, you cannot just win the rate of return battle and forget about taxes. In fact, I'm gonna show you an example that will shock you and how important it is to employ both the rate and return battle and the tax battle. Well, let's say 30 years ago, there was a guy that was 30 years of age and he wanted to have a million dollars when he turned 60. He didn't understand how to do this, so he went to his banker. He went into the bank and said, Mr. Banker, what do I need to say to have 30, uh, from 30 years from now, to have a million dollars? So starting now, how much do I have to put in every month? And back then, I think the CD rates were about 5%. I mean, I know now they're only like two or three, but then they were at five. So the banker put into the calculator and he said, what you need to do is put exactly $1,639.29 every month away for 30 years at 5%, you'll get your million. Well, this guy was so discouraged, he left the bank. He never saved a dime, and guess what? He's now the greeter at Walmart, and we've all seen him. But now, what if we could have taught him to win these two battles, the rate of return battle and the tax battle? Now, look at how it drops that number. It's almost unbelievable. Let's win one at a time, the rate of return. Let's say he could have averaged 10% instead of 5%. Now, that's down to $900 a month. Now, I'm just using round numbers, but... 900, you know, if we got this and we got 10%, $900.
But Mr. Smith, can most people save nine hundred a month? Yeah, probably not. However, that's seven hundred dollars better than this guy, right? And that's significant. Now, what if we help him to put his money away where it can't be taxed, and while it grows, you know, it's tax deferred? What if then, when he comes to take the money out, it's not taxed? So gross tax report, and he can't get it down. Now he's only paying 438 a month. I mean, is that pretty pretty good? I mean, can people afford that? Can you afford that? I mean, hey, you're probably blowing that every month, right? <laughs> See, to a lot of people, that's not a big deal. But it's not such much putting a ton away. It's about putting away what you can at a decent rate of return reducing taxes and avoiding the loss of principal. In fact, step six, when we're done, a person knows how and when they'll permanently be totally financially independent. And if we do this right, we can literally shave years off of a retirement day. I mean, that's really neat. Mr. Smith, let me ask you, if you were financially independent right now and you had enough in your nest egg so that every month you had enough that you didn't have to go to work anymore, what would you and your wife be doing? I mean, what are your dreams? What are your goals? What would you be doing? You know, that's great. Now think about it. If you were financially independent, you have options. And that's the point. You could do what you want, when you want, how you want. In fact, it was interesting. The other day we went through the implementation phase with a client. That's our second visit. And the wife was so excited. She gets up and says, you know what? I can go door to door to door asking my neighbors when they were going to be financially independent. And you know what? Nobody would know. But I do. And you know what? At the first, I mean, at that time, that couple, he and her, they became one. Because now they knew what their dreams were and when it was going to happen. So this stuff is exciting. And that's step six. Now step seven is estate planning. And this is not just the last, it's important. See, a lot of times we need to use a trust so upon your death, you can leave a legacy instead of headaches and possible tax burdens for your survivors. So how a trust helps you avoid probate and protect against liabilities? You know, also the importance of having a will, living will, power of attorney, that type of thing. Do you remember a while back that story about Terry Schiavo? You know, that was a lady who became incapacitated. And the whole world was arguing about what should have happened to her. Imagine how different it would have been for her and her family if she had only had a simple living will. So are you concerned about who's going to make the medical, legal, and financial decisions for you if you're not able to? Are you concerned with who will receive your assets when you pass away? I mean, are you interested in updating or creating a will or trust? So let me ask you, Mr. Smith, do you already have an attorney or other advisor that you work with on estate planning issues? No? Well, we recommend that you engage an attorney who specializes in estate planning. You also have the alternative to use a company that isn't a law firm, but prepares a documentation for simple estate plans. And I can give you some companies that can prepare those simple estate plan documentations for you if you're interested. Okay, great. So that's actually step seven. So those are the seven steps. Pretty neat, don't you think? So let me ask you, Mr. Smith, a very important question. Of these seven steps, if you had to narrow it down to two, drop my pen. If you had to narrow it down to two that are the biggest priority in your life between increasing cash flow, eliminating debt, developing an emergency fund, life insurance protection, building long-term financial independence, and tax planning, which is critical, and estate planning, and if you could only pick two, which two would it be? Okay, emergency fund and step six. Excellent. Those are good choices. So let me tell you what we do. We do what's called a financial needs analysis so that we can make sure that the products we offer are suitable for you. 
where in a second I'm going to ask you a few questions to help determine what your needs are and what your goals and dreams are. Then I'm going to take this back to my office where we have a very sophisticated software program and we'll input your information and it will help us develop a plan of attack specific around your needs and help you to become one thing financially independent the soonest so it is awesome so let me tell you the cost of this though before we come back all right so when I come back what I expect this is the cost is hot chocolate chip cookies fresh out of the oven which you personally bank and a tall cup of milk I'm <laughs> just kidding but you were too serious there for a second I had to throw that out now let me explain actually how we get paid so you know the companies that you choose to link up with and help you with your specific goals, they pay us a referral fee or, or a commission. So you won't be billed for services rendered by us. So it's an actual win-win scenario. However, the in information that I bring back to you will only be as accurate as the information that we put in. So, Mr. Smith, work with me here because we're talking about your financial future. And if we do this right, we can potentially shave years off your retirement date. Now, the first, third, or fourth questions are yes or no questions. And I can only have yes or no answers. I can't have maybes. And this will help me with your short and midterm goals and where we're headed. And in the next two to three years, do you plan on making a major purchase? That's the first one. Okay. All right. You know, this is great. You know, Mr. Smith, this is going to be awesome. When we get back together in a day or two, you've got, you know, $300 to work with. Man, when we get back together, we're going to have a crystal clear picture of how and when you could potentially be totally financially independent. This will fulfill your dreams, your goal. You're going to love it, but you're going to need to listen, and I'm going to need to spend some time on this because I know you're serious. And I'm going to get serious too, all right? It's going to be awesome, Mr. Smith. This is going to change the quality of your life. And you're going to owe me big. <laughs> now, it's very important that we build upon what we've talked about today. So we need to set up a time within 24 to 48 hours. But if we have to go clear in the next week, I'll have to re probably go back over a lot of this that we just covered. So we need to get together as soon as we can. Don't you understand? because we're talking about your life here. So with that in mind, uh, what's your schedule look like tomorrow? I actually have 11 a.m. and 3 p.m. open. Which would you prefer? 3 p.m.? Okay, you put that down. That's great. Thank you, Mr. Smith. 